Hello there! Today we are starting the first part of a three-part series where we're going to make a character controller that can do this. Part one is going to be about character movement, part two is going to be about this orbiting camera, and then part three is going to be about having the character move relative to the camera direction. So let's get into it. We're here in an entirely empty new Unity project. The finished project after all three parts will be available on my Patreon link down below in the description to go get that if you want to follow along with that. If not, let's just get into the tutorial. We're going to add a couple of simple things to begin with, like adding a plane so that we can have a floor. And we're going to be adding a cube for our player character for the time being. Obviously, in your own game, this will just be your player character. For now, let's put the camera somewhere usable so that we can see the entire playing field. And we'll rotate it down a little bit so that we can see what we're doing. All right, now, in our player, we're going to be adding a rigid body, meaning that it's going to have physics. And then we're also going to be adding a new script, which we're going to call player movement. In that player movement script, we're going to uh, first get a rigid body variable. We'll call that RB. And in void start, we're going to give that a value of get component rigid body. Now we have a direct reference to the rigid body on this object. And before we get moving on to the actual movement, uh, we're going to make a serialized field up here. Uh, it's going to be a float and we'll call that uh, move speed, something of the like. And we'll set it equal to like 10. We'll be able to change this value in the actual Unity editor in a moment. Then down here in the update function, let's zoom in a little bit so that you can actually read what I'm doing. In the update function, we'll make another float and we'll call that something like horizontal input. That'll be equal to input, get access raw, horizontal, multiplied by our movement speed variable from before. Then we can just copy and paste this line over because we're going to also obviously make one for our vertical input, which will use the axis for vertical. Now, our rigid body velocity will be equal to a new vector 3 and it auto fails here to horizontal input, vertical input 0. That is not correct because as you can see, this is the x value, this is the y value, this is the z value. But to move along the ground, we'll be needing to move along the X and the Z. The Y value is actually the up and down value. So we'll be taking the vertical input and putting it into the Z slot. And the Y value will be zero. And now we can see that we can move around. But we're kind of like tumbling around. And if this is what you're looking for, fantastic. This works. But it's probably not what you're looking for. So what we can do is over here in the rigid body, we can uh, go into our constraints and we can freeze the rotation uh, along all of the axes. If you want to rotate this object, you've got to rotate through the transform. The rigid body rotation is separate from that. So you don't want to rotate this thing at all. We only want to be able to move it into different positions. So once we've done that, you'll be able to see now our cube is just messing about. It's a little difficult to see. Let's put a different material on this real quick and just make that material some darker color so that we can actually see what we're doing. And as you can see, we are now moving, being able to jump. So after all that, we'll just add a if statement here. And that is if get button down, and then we'll need to give it a name for a button, which will be jump, something that Unity Engine provides for you. If that is the case, we'll set rigid body velocity equal to a new vector three again we'll keep the x and z values the same which we can do by just putting in rigid body velocity dot x and rigid body velocity dot z we'll also need a new serialized field for our jump speed or jump height or whatever you want to call it let's put that to five for the time being and that will be our y value so we can just put in jump and if you want to see what keys that refers to you can always come up here into edit project settings put it somewhere in your workspace and an in input manager you've got all of your axes here so jump corresponds to the space 
there's a bit of an issue though, and that is uh, because we just kept the value for the jumping at zero in our movement for left and right and up and down, we can't actually jump because the moment we start to jump, the next frame our jumping gets reset back to zero because of this little line of code. So what you'll do instead is you'll keep this at rigid body velocity y. If you're putting a new value in your velocity, if you don't want anything to change, you are very tempted to put in a zero. And that's exactly the reason that we did that, to show you why you shouldn't do that. This is the way to say to the rigid body, you know what, this axis, just keep going. Don't put in a zero. Now that we've done that, you can see we can jump, but we can jump infinitely, which is less than ideal. Luckily, there's a uh, quick little fix for that, and that is in this if statement, after we check for get button down, we'll also check with a two and percent sites for a math function called approximately, and you will be able to see if you hover over it, we need a float A and a float B. So we're going to be comparing our rigid body velocity Y, which is our up and down movement, to a value of roughly zero. The reason we're not checking for it to be exactly zero is because of the way rigid bodies work. They're never exactly standing still, technically speaking anyway. But if you're putting something like that in code, it is going to look exactly for zero and that's just never gonna happen. This is a good approximation though. So now we won't be able to jump if we're either already moving up or if we're still moving down. And now as much as we spam, I don't know if you can hear me spamming the spacebar, uh, we'll only jump when we're on the ground. And that's basically our character controller. Now, one last thing is the character isn't facing in the direction it's moving, which is kind of not great, right? And you might think that is going to be an absolute pain to fix, because how in the world are we going to do something like that? Well, I'm here to tell you relatively easily. Because we've got a uh, simple function for that in Unity, and uh, we can use transform dot forward, which is the forward direction for your character. And you can actually set that to a new vector three, which will be equal to the rigid body velocity X and rigid body velocity Z and the middle one. Here we will actually put in a zero because we never wanted to be looking upward. If you do, obviously you can put rigid body velocity Y in there. This will give you the movement direction of the character and then just set the transform forward to that movement direction. So as you can see, that works like a charm, and now we're moving around. And if you're using a controller, because you totally can, you have 360 degrees of free movement. And just as easily as these couple of lines of code, we're still under 30 lines of code, we have a functioning 3D character controller. Now, as a little bonus, we're going to give you a little script here for the camera to move with the character because now we're very much looking down on the character, which isn't very fun. So let's move it a little bit closer. Uh, that's about right. Maybe that's a little too close. So what we can do is we can add a new empty object, which will be a parent to our camera. So we'll put the camera under this empty object. And we'll just add a script to this empty object now. And we'll call that follow player. In here, we'll add a new serialized field, a transform for the player. And we simply just put our own transform position to be equal to the player position. Then in here, we grab our player, which in our case is the cube, and put it into the open slot here. And now, this empty object will always be on top of the player, which will then result in when the player moves, that object will move with it. And since the camera is parented to it, the camera will move proportionally as well. So as you can see, now that we're playing the game, it's uh, kind of hard to tell that we're moving around, but the camera is moving with us and I just walked off the ground. Clearly we need a little bit more space, but that is one of the big upsides of doing it this way, because we can just adjust the camera in our 3D viewport here. Just say, move it a little bit more back, maybe a little bit more up as well. And our follow player script still works like a charm. 
Next time though, we'll be talking about how to make this thing orbit around the player, which is a lot more fancy, but probably going to be needed for a lot of your games. So do tune in next time again if you want to see the full version of this project file with orbiting camera, movement direction, relative movement direction, and of course the basics that we've made here today. There's a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can download it if you are subscribed.